Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Nahida's rerun is here and a lot of players are definitely interested in pulling for her because of all the high praise and recommendations going around, which is very much deserved. So in this video, I want to quickly summarize what makes Nahida such an amazing unit to help you, especially newer players and first time pullers, better understand what this adorable Archon has to offer. And if you're interested in more in-depth guides on her, you can check out my four part Nahida series linked below where I break down a lot of Nahida's synergy in various teams. Yes, that's four videos for one character because honestly, she's that good. But for now, here's six reasons why Nahida is broken. Number one, a major part in any Dendro unit's kit is how well they can apply their elements due to their importance in reactions. In Nahida's case, she excels with flying colors. To start, applying Dendro with Nahida can be a convenient fire and forget process. Just mark up to eight enemies with Nahida's skill, then trigger reactions or hit them with Dendro core damage, and everyone marked will trigger Tri Karma Purification, applying Dendro and dealing damage at intervals. And when you have Nahida's burst up and at least one Electro on the team, this can make her try karma proc faster. This mark lasts for so long, follows enemies around, and re-triggers constantly and easily. Since Nahida's skill cooldown is so short, refreshing and remarking enemies is hassle-free too. Because of the convenient skill mechanics, it's easy to slot Nahida into rotations, whether using her as an on-field or off-field unit. And as a Catalyst user, you can use her normal and charged attacks to further apply more Dendro and make her drive certain abilities on-field, like Synchro's Rain Swords. Perhaps the only noticeable caveat is that her means of applying Dendro from off-field disappears when the enemies die. So in multi-wave content, Nahida has to be swapped back in to reapply her skill mark. In quick swap teams, this is no issue, but it can be an inconvenience with some units that don't want to be swapped out prematurely, like Sino. It's a very specific and ultimately minor issue, but it's still worth noting so you can adapt accordingly. More interestingly, her skill's Dendro application is very special because of its gate. It's related to elemental gauge theory, which is one of Genshin's more complex mechanics, but let's just simplify it. Basically, all our Dendro units apply one unit of Dendro with their abilities, with one very rare but minor exception from Dendro Traveler. However, Nahida's skill proc applies 1.5 units of Dendro. This above average gauge essentially means stronger Dendro application, which in practical use means that there's more potential to trigger Dendro related reactions more often, like blooms, or sustain auras longer, like for the burning aura. This puts her application strength a cut above her peers. In fact, it's sometimes too strong that one case where it might pose some challenge is when you're trying to swirl Electro. Because if the Dendro aura is stronger than usual, it can be harder to make Dendro and Electro auras coexist on an enemy for your Animo unit to swirl Electro. But that can be remedied by being more conscious of how you apply elements to ensure you can swirl Electro more easily. All in all, Nahida really set a standard for how good a unit's Dendro application can be. Number 2. When Dendro arrived and brought all these new reactions, the importance and value of elemental mastery became even more pronounced. Some units gained new playstyles and builds that valued EM more. It breathed new life into existing EM-focused equipment, and we also saw new ones released that were EM-centric. More so, units that buffed EM gained even more relevance, and we knew moving forward that EM-boosting abilities would be quite valuable in the meta ahead. Enter Nahida, who came in with one of the best, if not the best, EM buffing abilities. The way it works is essentially simple. Whenever her burst is active, the on-field unit receives an EM buff which is based on 25% of the EM of the party member with the highest EM. Normally, this might have been based on Nahida's own EM stat, like how Sucrose's passive does it. Instead, we get a much more flexible mechanic for different team comps and an interesting departure from the usual buffing mechanics. For example, you will have other teammates that have a higher EM stat than Nahida, like Electro Hyperbloom Trigger. In that case, there's less pressure to stack EM on Nahida, and she can even take advantage of that EM buff herself if she's played as an on-field driver. Additionally, as a Dendro unit herself, she really makes good use of stacking EM. For one, her own Tri Karma damage scaling is a combination of attack and EM stats, and as someone who can trigger spread and bloom reactions often, stacking EM means more reaction damage for her. More importantly, her fourth ascension passive enhances the value of EM on her, because more than just increasing her actual EM stat, EM is also converted into crit rate and damage bonus to her skill damage. So even if you trade crit stats for EM, it's still good value as that's one stat buffing multiple damage related stats. Leave it to the Dendro Archon to indeed be a master of elemental mastery. 
Number 3. While Nahida's Dendro application, EM buffing capabilities, and badminton outfit get a lot of attention, I think one of her underrated traits that needs to be talked about more is her energy generation. After all, energy management is a very important part of optimizing your team's damage and rotations, and if you look at many other Dendro units, they're quite dependent on their bursts, and we'll surely see more of those in the future. Nahida herself generates 3 Dendro particles every 7 seconds when the Tri Karma effect triggers. By far, this is the best Dendro battery mechanic we have in terms of the rate of particle generation and how conveniently it works. Nahida doesn't even have to be on field to generate those particles. So, when you comp her with on field Dendro units like Alhatham or Tignari, they're able to easily receive the Dendro particles. This allows you to build less ER on them and focus more on other offensive stats like crit and EM, ultimately leading to better overall damage. Baiju is also coming up as another burst dependent unit and he's predictably going to have a much easier energy situation if he's comped with Nahida. So it's safe to say that Nahida will likely remain a top dendro battery moving forward. Number 4. Building Nahida is super easy thanks to her straightforward build path and very large selection of weapon options. For starters, there's a good reason to simply skew her towards an EM-focused build as discussed before, and there's also the option to optimize her stats for on-field and damage-dealing roles. Either way, she has flexible artifact main stats and substat options. It's also helpful that her ER needs aren't as demanding since her burst only costs 50. Farming for her artifacts is also very efficient since her best sets are either the Deepwood Memories for adding Dendro damage and shredding Dendro resistance, or if someone else in the team is using the Deepwood set, there's the Gilded Dreams which gives a lot of EM and some attack. Both of these are found in the same domain, so that's a better chance of getting either one of the full sets for her. And it's ultimately an efficient use of Frezen, as many other Dendro units can also make good use of both the 2-piece and 4-piece set bonuses. In fact, I would say that it's next to the Emblem domain in terms of Resin efficiency. And for her weapons, Nahida is brimming with viable catalyst options. If you want the most free-to-play friendly yet still good choices, the 3-star magic guide is always in surplus and the 4-star Mappa Mare is craftable. You can even turn Nahida into a pseudo healer with a craftable prototype Amber, which I sometimes do. And since Nahida's burst is easy to spam, prototype Amber's healing is equally as spammable. As you get gacha 4 stars, your options open up further, with the Widsith, Wandering Evenstar, Sacrificial Fragments, and even Favonius Codex all being great picks, each having their own advantages. Even if her signature weapon, A Thousand Floating Dreams, is her general best in slot, it's not better by a large margin compared to your alternative 4 star and 5 star options. I'd say it's a low priority pull, and you can rest assured you're getting good value on Nahida, even on other viable catalysts. Essentially, the baseline build for a decent Nahida can be quite easy to achieve, with much room to still min-max her damage and support capabilities. Number 5. While her combat and support abilities are unquestionably great, Nahida also gives you unique ways to explore the world of Teva thanks to her interesting passive. It essentially has two simple features that lead to profound effects. First, Nahida can grab harvestable items from a distance using her hold skill. For those who are still in the process of farming lots of open world materials, especially for ascension, this is a great quality of life improvement. Instead of having to run towards these harvestables one by one, you can just do a camera sweep or two of the area and voila, you just get these items instantly. Sumeru especially has some of the more annoying harvestable items like Ruka Shava Mushrooms or Kalpalata Lotuses, which are often in hard to reach places. Personally, Nahida saved me quite some time with harvesting all these different materials. The second effect is that pointing her viewfinder at an applicable Sumeru NPC allows you to read their minds and go all big brother on them, or in Nahida's case, a small sister, which is such an original ability reflecting her lore. While many players will probably just ignore it, those who really love to spend their time exploring every nook and cranny Genshin has to offer can definitely appreciate what this mind reading ability adds. For such a strong character to also offer something unique in terms of farming convenience and means to learn more about the world of Teyvat is the cherry on top. With all these characteristics combined and more, Nahida is quite a value-loaded and future-proof unit that will definitely have a stable place in the meta. And even if meta isn't your absolute focus, Nahida's other fun traits for exploration and gameplay make her very easy to enjoy as a casual player too. As we continue to get new characters, it will become a common question how well they can work with Dendro reactions and, by extension, Nahida. She has such a potent support role that allows her to synergize into so many current and future 
comps. I'm looking forward to Fontaine's new hydro units working with Nahida for blooming teams, as well as electro and pyro units who will take good advantage of her abilities. Of course, dendro units will continue to have promising synergy with Nahida. If you're also someone who likes to collect constellations for their favorite characters, Nahida has a lot of room to grow thanks to her busted second constellation. It gives your bloom-related reactions a chance to crit, which is currently an exclusive buff to her, and quicken-related reactions will shred the enemy's defense, which is a pretty rare debuff. Though not essential, if you choose to eventually invest in Nahida's constellations, she gains much more value for all the dendro-focused comps you'll use her with down the line. All in all, Nahida is not necessarily a must-have unit since I believe there isn't such a thing, but I think she comes really, really close if there ever was one. Anyone who's interested in playing Dendro teams, exploring the Dendro meta, or just thinks Nahida is absolutely adorable will not regret pulling her at all. If you're pulling for our Radish Archon this version, I wish you lots of luck! But that's all for this video, so let me know in the comments what you think of Nahida, whether you have her or not. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!